In this lesson, we're going to talk about buffers and buffer capacity and the important roles of buffers in controlling pH. So let's look at some examples so we can learn how to identify if we have a buffer present. So let's start with something fairly simple. Let's look at HF. And when we make its conjugate, we see it's F minus because it differs by a single proton. And so we see, yes, HF is a weak acid. F minus is its conjugate base. So therefore, this could make an acid, weak acid conjugate base pair. And therefore, this could be a buffer solution. Now one thing to notice is you may not always see this written as F minus because remember ions don't exist independently. They have to have a cation with them. So this might also be shown as HF and NAF. This is an ionic compound and so in water it's a strong electrolyte and so it will actually dissociate into the ions. We aren't concerned that the sodium ion is also present. We're just concerned that we have to have the F minus present because we need that to be the conjugate base of the HF. So what we look at is looking for the weak acid, looking for its conjugate, and noticing that it may be hidden inside an ionic compound. Let's look at another example. Let's look at HCl and Cl minus, which might also be as HCl, NaCl. And can this be a buffer? Thinking about what we know about HCl. So this is actually not a buffer because HCl is a strong acid. And strong acids and strong bases cannot form buffers. So an important place where we need buffers is in the blood. We actually maintain a pH of about 7.4 in blood. And that happens through the work of multiple buffers. The most common is our bicarbonate buffer. And what that does is it makes sure that we maintain this pH and it kind of shifts back and forth. So it's kind of like a Le Chatelier's principle where the reaction is going to shift back and forth between the acid form and its conjugate base form in order to maintain a constant pH. Because as that reaction shifts back and forth, we're also changing the amount of H plus that is available in solution. And that's what's determining the pH of the solution. And what we know is that our body functions most efficiently when the pH of blood is approximately 7.4. And we have a fairly small range, about 7.35 to 7.45, where our body functions normally. If we get out of this range, if we get higher, we have alkalosis lower pH, we have acidosis, and so one thing that affects this greatly is the amount of CO2 in the bloodstream. And so if we have too much CO2, we're going to shift this reaction to the right because what we're seeing is that we have CO2 here is a reactant. If we have excess CO2, Le Chatelier's principle tells us that the reaction is going to shift to the right and we're going to form more H+. And as the H plus concentration increases, the pH decreases because the pH goes down with higher concentrations of H+. So now buffers can only do so much and we have something called the buffer capacity. And so we think of this as kind of like how much something that the buffer can absorb. So imagine you have a sponge on the counter and you pour a little bit of water on it and it soaks it up and you pour a little more and it keeps soaking it up and more and more and it soaks it up until at some point the sponge cannot absorb any more water. And so if you pour more water on after that, it just runs all over the counter. And so there is a limit to what a buffer can do. So if a system 
that has a buffer gets so overwhelmed it can no longer function as a buffer. The buffer is meant to maintain the pH within a fairly reasonable concentration of H or with reasonable concentration of added acid or base, but it can only go so far. So if we're looking at our buffer, so imagine that we add something to our buffer here. We add some HCl. What we know is that that's a strong acid, so it's a strong electrolyte, and as a result it's going to completely dissociate in water, and so we'll have H plus ions. Now we also have those anions floating around from our conjugate base of our buffer, and so those H plus ions will connect with the A minus ions and form HA, which is a weak acid, and leave those chloride ions hanging out. Remember, the H plus is not going to reconnect with the Cl minus because that's a strong acid and so therefore is a strong electrolyte and completely dissociates. So those H plus ions find the conjugate of that weak acid, which will connect with it and form HA molecules. And so we only have a finite number of those A minus particles present in our buffer solution and that when some of those are made formed into HA we have fewer of the A minus molecules available to absorb that additional H plus. The same thing is true for adding a base we can only add so much before we reach the capacity of that buffer. And we're not going to get into homeostasis in this class. I do want to mention it because it is something you'll hear about in anatomy and physiology. And homeostasis is a good thing. Our bodies need it. Equilibrium, when we reach equilibrium, we're actually no longer living. That's when our bodies are, are achieving that. So these are two different things. They are not the same thing. Homeostasis requires energy. Equilibrium does not. We when we get to homeostasis, what we're saying is we're maintaining a steady state. And so the system is more ordered than the surroundings. And that is not the natural tendency when we look at chemical reactions. And so in equilibrium, we maintain a steady state as well, but the system is proceeding towards a level of disorder similar to the surroundings. So different conditions, different circumstances, different needs depending on the situation.